Bonsoir. Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs. How about a nice hand for Brian Sand and his quintet? They'll be coming back to entertain you. In about one and a half minutes or less, your family graduates and d d degree holders and every other kind of certificate that they've been earning over the last year or so will be coming in to the tent from the right-hand side, your right-hand side. They're just outside now on the road. And it would be nice if you gave them a round of applause. We'll come back with a few announcements, and we should be able to start right on time at 6 p.m.
How about a nice hand for Max, our great piper? My name is David Harp, I'm University Marshal, and it's my job to help make things work, but there, is, there are perhaps 40 people who make these happenings work out the way they do, and five of them are gonna entertain you for about five minutes, and then we'll return to the podium for a few uh, small announcements. <laughs>
Bonsoir encore. Bienvenue for this convocation. And as I mentioned, we will have a couple of announcements, one of which is to make sure that we have full safety should the tent have to be evacuated, which is we've been promised there may be a few drizzles, but the tent will not fall down and the winds will not blow too heavily. It'll just keep you comfortable overall. That's built-in air conditioning. That's the best we can do. Ms. Jocelyn Yunan is the is the associate registrar, and she has some comments with respect to the possible evacuation of the tent, should it be necessary. Ms. Yunan. Bonsoir. Your safety is our priority. If an evacuation is required, the registrar will announce this to you. You will then be required to leave the tent immediately. Depending on the circumstances, you will be evacuated to another building or to the field that's across the street on your right. If an evacuation is required to another building, graduates, please go to the arts building, and guests, you will follow the red line that's on the street and in fact, there's a little uh, plan on the back of the program that explains this to you. And it will take you to the Red Path building. At all times, if you need assistance or the help of a medic who is on site, please speak with an usher or a security officer and they are on both sides of the tent. Notre priorité est votre sécurité. Si une évacuation des lieux devait être nécessaire, le, la registraire en fera l'annonce. Si l'évacuation s'effectue vers le champ qui est juste à votre droite, s'il vous plaît, allez, dirigez-vous vers là-bas. Autrement, vous irez vers l'édifice qui s'appelle Red Path. Les diplômés iront au au um, pavillon qui s'appelle Arts et les invités au pavillon qui s'appelle Red Path. Passez une soirée inoubliable et félicitations aux diplômés. Merci. The main activity will be for you to get your diploma, certificate, or whatever has been earned and hopefully it will all be accurately spelled, and if it isn't, we will correct it. But it almost never happens that it is inaccurately put together. The main thing for you to concentrate on is to make sure that you have your lineup card, which splits into two. I'd like to hear a lot of right now that you split them. In the first half of that lineup card, when you mount the stage, will be to deliver your card to the reader. He will be dressed in bright yellow. You won't miss him. Uh, he's a, Jim Archibald is his name, professor in continuing studies. And prior to that, I will get you out of your seats on the side, on your left-hand side, and there's a mirror that if, if the humidity tonight is such that your hair is going four different ways, you can correct it at least a little bit. Then you will walk forward to have your photo taken. There's an X on the ground. They'll show you just where to, what to do. Then you will assemble yourselves at the foot of the stairs, come up the stairs carefully, present your first half of your lineup card to the reader, uh, Professor Archibald, and then walk across and you will be capped or tapped and that will be explained what that means. Capping and tapping is done very lightly. There have been no injuries to date with that activity. Then you walk across the stage and down to the left and pick up your diploma or certificate. And the fr I have to tell you this because it may not work quite well for you, is that the step that you drop down is about this much distance more than you're going to think that it is and you'll sink like that and we have a catcher and a medic at the foot of the stairs <laughs> everything will be okay but just be a little bit aware take the bra the railings uh, on your way down and that really is the major issue as you can hear the piper uh, this is jeff
Jeff McCarthy, who pipes regularly in front of Ogilvy's. If you haven't seen him before, you will see him now. And as he comes into the tent, he'll be leading the platform party, which will be terminated by the main three, the chancellor, the chair of the board, and Principal Fortier. I would ask you to rise, levez-vous s'il vous plaît, for the platform party. And you might give him a round of applause. Thank you, Professor Purdy. Good evening, graduating students, families, friends, ladies and gentlemen. Bonsoir à tous. Au nom de l'Université McGill, je voudrais vous souhaiter la bienvenue à notre cérémonie de collation des grades 2016, des diplômés de l'École d'éducation permanente. I extend a warm welcome on this very chilly evening to parents, friends, and partners of today's guests of honor, our graduates. And indeed, I particularly welcome you who are about to become 
McGill's most recent alumni. Your attendance here, I know, means a lot to your families. Two of my sons are McGill graduates, and I've had the chance to sit in the audience watching the proceedings the way you are today. And when I attended convocation as a guest, the Chancellor, my predecessor, was a wonderful man by the name of Arnold Steinberg, a generous and constant friend of McGill, who unfortunately passed away suddenly last December. Arnold relished these convocation ceremonies, along with every part of his long history with the university. As the principal said in her eulogy, Arnold embodied the McGill spirit, a spirit that unites open curiosity, intellectual rigor, energy, and compassion. And while he graduated in 1954 and had a very rich life outside our gates, in a very real sense, he never left McGill. Today, you can appropriately reflect on the curiosity, intellect, and energy that got you here to McGill in the first place and that has made you successful during your time here. Along the way, you've been exposed to some outstanding teachers and researchers, and you've had the chance to engage in critical thinking with others and to reflect on your views about our world and your place in it. This, I hope you will agree, was a wonderful opportunity, made special because it happened here at McGill. À titre d'anciens étudiants et diplômés, il vous deviendra bientôt évident que McGill jouit d'une réputation unique. Dans ce monde de plus en plus concurrentiel et international, dans lequel vous êtes sur le point d'entrer, McGill suscite un respect et une admiration remarquable, particulièrement à l'échelle internationale. Regardless of what your next step is, I hope that you look upon your years at McGill as having been happy, productive, and rewarding. Of one thing I am confident, and that is that few investments you will make will provide as much of a return, both in financial and in personal satisfaction. When you do think about McGill, I'd ask you to remember that almost every experience that you've had that was core to McGill's mandate has been enhanced and shaped by those who came before you. I speak particularly about those graduates who supported the university financially and with the gift of their time. And once again, I think of Arnold Steinberg, who for many years was so very generous in so many ways to his alma mater. I read recently an article written by a Canadian expat by the name of Hardeep Gruwal. It was entitled, Universities Help Us to Achieve, Let's Pay It Back, Canada. His point was that for some unknown reason, Canadians are quite adept at resisting any kind of sectarian affinity for the educational institution where they got their degree. He thought it was, and I quote, high time Canadians just stopped liking their universities and started loving them. He suggests that rather than being just a rite of passage, graduates should look upon uh, their graduation as an inauguration into a very special community. So today I ask you to start loving your university, or perhaps I should ask you to keep on loving McGill. Votre attachement continue fera en sorte que notre université maintienne sa réputation enviable en tant que l'un des principaux établissements d'enseignement supérieur au monde. To each of you here this evening, who will shortly formally take your place among the over 250,000 McGill graduates scattered around the globe in over 180 countries, my sincere congratulations for your achievement, and I wish you every success as you embark upon the next exciting phase of your lives. Merci. Thank you. Je voudrais maintenant inviter la professeure Suzanne Fortier, principale et vice-chancelière de l'Université McGill, de à s'adresser à l'auditoire. Madame Fortier.
Bienvenue aux diplômés de 2016. Welcome to the School of Continuing Studies graduates of 2016. I'm joined here today by your families and friends, by our chancellor, the chair of our board, our governors and governors emeriti, by our distinguished honorary degree recipient, by special guests and esteemed colleagues. We are here together to say how proud we are of you and of everything that has gotten you here today. C'est pour moi un immense bonheur de vous féliciter pour vos réalisations et votre persévérance. What an honor to congratulate you on your achievements and your perseverance. Today marks a special milestone. Savor it, enjoy it, celebrate, and remember the moment. As some of you may know, my own two degrees from McGill are in crystallography. That means that I like numbers. I love numbers, particularly big data. So I can't help myself. I have to share a few numbers with you this evening. And I'll start with 40,000. That's the number of bagels eaten in our own residences here at McGill last year. And they all came from the Myelin. Uh, speaking about food, 25,000 kilograms of fresh produce. We're talking about apple, watermelons, cantaloupes, peppers, coming from our McDonald campus eaten here on our campus. So this is McGill feeding McGill with 25,000 kilograms of fresh produce. Isn't that great? <laughs> now, a bigger number, 5,531,792 is the estimated number of Canadians with a university degree. And that's a very important number. It represents 28% of the population. It's a good number when we compare it to the OECD average of 23. And it's important for us to remember the commitment of our country to make education accessible to everyone. Now, two more numbers, 19 and 68, which you may guess, are the age of our youngest and our oldest graduates in the spring convocation. And it speaks to the diversity of experiences people bring to our campus and to the learning environment at McGill. You know, there are 7,337 students graduating in the spring convocation. And one thing that really thrills me is that so many of you are able to come to your convocation of course, you know, convocation is a time of pride and joy for us at McGill. And it's a time of celebration. But I think it's something else. I think it's also a sign of loyalty. Loyalty to your classmates, the people you've studied with. Loyalty to the friends and families who have been helping you all along. Loyalty to the professor, librarians, and staff who've been rooting for you from the beginning. And so I want all of the graduates to please stand up, all of you. And I want you to give a big round of applause to all the people who've been behind you. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. I will end with one number. Number one. I love this number. Of course, you know, it's great to call yourself number one once in a while, but that's not why I like it. You know, there are 7.4 billion people in the world and growing, 7.4 billion. But there is only one of you. Isn't that incredible? And think about it. We all are unique. And so when I think and when I talk about number one, I'm not talking about you competing with others. 
I'm talking about you making the best of what is unique about you. And this, of course, is the challenge for all of us throughout our lives. What is unique? about each and every one of you. What will you make of what is unique about you and what will be your unique contributions to the world? We are very fortunate to have an excellent role model with us today. Later in the ceremony, we will bestow an honorary doctorate upon a pioneer in social entrepreneurship, Ms. Zita Cobb, who has used her very unique talents and deep belief in the connection between people and place to foster community on our home of Fogo Island. Convocations mark, for many of us, a new beginning. But it is also a time to say some goodbyes. This is Stephen Strapo, our Secretary General, very last convocation ceremony. Over the past six and a half years, he has proudly watched over 60,000 students graduate from McGill. As Secretary General, Stephen has provided wise counsel and sound judgment. He has worked hard to help strengthen the policies that reflect the McGill community's shared values, and importantly, to put these policies into practice. Mon cher Stephen, Thank you for your quiet determination and your steadfast commitment to good governance. And to all of you, the graduates, you may have to say a few goodbyes too, but remember the friends you've made here and keep them close. Vous vous joignez à une belle et grande famille des diplômés de McGill. And in fact, I want to tell you that I did get a message from one member of the family. Monsieur Justin Trudeau from Ottawa wrote to you. So let me share his message uh, with you. He said, you're not the leaders of tomorrow. You're leaders today. Congrats, McGill graduates. Et sachez que les portes de McGill vous seront toujours très grandes ouvertes. McGill sera toujours votre maison. McGill will always be your home. Félicitations. Congratulations. Thank you, Principal Fortier. I invite Mr. Firas Al-Hafid, Director of Language and Intercultural Communication, to introduce the recipient of this year's School of Continuing Studies Award for Distinguished Teaching. Madam Principal and Vice Chancellor, it is with great pleasure that I introduce to you Bruce Manson, recipient of the award for distinguished teaching of the School of Continuing Studies. Bruce began his teaching career at the Department of Language and Intercultural Communication in 1992. He has taught in our part-time English and professional communication program and intensive English language and culture program. In addition, Bruce has always been involved in supporting program revisions and customized projects. As a teacher, Bruce is a dedicated professional who knows how to captivate his students and instill in them the love of learning. In the words of his students, sa façon d'enseigner facilite vraiment l'apprentissage. Si je le pouvais, je ferais tout mon parcours scolaire avec, en anglais avec Bruce. Bruce est un meilleur professeur que j'ai eu la chance d'avoir dans ma vie. Il prend le temps et on peut réellement voir la passion dans ses yeux. 
He knows the meaning of teaching as a skill. Teaching is not only giving information, but to know how to provide that information is more important. In addition, he is dynamic when teaching and always making sure that students get the lessons from each class. Bruce is a very gentle person, and as a teacher, he's very good. He's always well prepared, well organized, and always all ears with students. Best teacher ever, I love you, Bruce. As a colleague, Bruce is exemplary. He is a team player and a reliable collaborator in the department's many innovative projects. His positive nature, his professionalism, his strong work ethics, and his commitment to excellence are valued by one and all. On behalf of the Department of Language and Intercultural Communication, I extend my most heartfelt congratulations to our dear colleague, Bruce Manson. I now invite Dr. Judith Potter, Dean of the School of Continuing Studies, to present Ms. Zita Cobb, that she may have conferred upon her the highest recognition that is within the power of this university to grant. Dr. Potter. Mr. Chancellor, I am delighted to present to you Zita Cobb, a social entrepreneur with a mission. Like everyone here this evening, Zita Cobb has a story, and hers is particularly remarkable and inspiring. Home for Zita is Fogo Island, a ruggedly beautiful, spirited location off the northeast coast of Newfoundland that musician Alan Doyle refers to as Salty Narnia. Touted as one of the four corners of the world by the Flat Earth Society, Fogo, until quite recently, was a world apart, accessible only by boat or ferry. Although born in the second half of the 20th century, Zita grew up one of seven children in an isolated 19th century society but surrounded by resourceful, creative, and caring people rooted in that spectacular place. The collapse of the Newfoundland cod fishery unfolding during her youth had immense impact on communities like Fogo, and Zita determined that she would further her education in business to better understand world forces that could result in such devastation. Following university, she had a very successful business career and was perhaps best known as a senior executive in the fiber optics industry. Her travels and global exposure taught her that endless small communities were facing similar despair as her home of Fogo Island. And she decided to use her resources and her education to make a difference. Returning to Fogo in 2001, she established with two brothers the Shorefast Foundation as a vehicle to spearhead change. With community and other partners, the idea and, indeed, the reality of an economy based on the gift of place, the resourcefulness and creativity of its inhabitants, and a profound natural hospitality have emerged under Zita's catalytic leadership. The renowned Fogo Island Inn, which incidentally should be high on everyone's list of places to visit, is truly a big idea, but one that fits brilliantly with the environment and the integral artistry of the community. With its bold yet historically connected design, created by architect Todd Saunders, McGill alumnus and Newfoundland native, as well as with its environmentally sustainable features and furniture and furnishings made by hand in the community, the inn draws global travelers seeking a genuine yet profound experience. 
artist studios and residency programs extend the natural artistry of the place and people and make Fogo an international destination of choice. Run by a board that includes community members and with proceeds that go back to building the community, the enterprise uses a business model with social outcomes. Best of all, Zita is a tireless advocate of this model and this approach of leveraging philanthropy and communal self-knowledge into sustainability. She speaks widely and has been much celebrated and we are truly honored that she is with us here today to accept this award. It is particularly fitting that this award be given at the convocation ceremony for the School of Continuing Studies as there are many crossovers in the values that drive Zeta and those that are vital to continuing studies, including the, a profound respect for the culture and knowledge that others bring to an enterprise, a desire to provide opportunities for individuals, organizations, and communities to learn and thrive, and a deep respect for the proverb, give a man a fish and he will eat for a day, teach him how to fish and he will eat for a lifetime. Mr. Chancellor, I present to you Zita Cobb that you may confer upon her the degree of Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa. I now call upon Dr. Zita Cobb to address convocation. Dr. Cobb. Good afternoon, everyone. Chancellor Meehan, Principal and Vice Chancellor Fortier, Dean Potter, members of the Platform Party, proud families and friends, and most of all, the graduating class of 2016, thank you for having me here with you and for awarding me this honor. I am very proud to be standing here among you. I am pleased to accept this honorary degree from McGill in recognition of our efforts to help secure a resilient and economic, cultural and economic future for Fogo Island. Though I am only 57 years old, I have really lived in three centuries, and I'm not a vampire. <laughs> Until I was 10, I lived in the 19th century. Fogo Island was an inshore fishing community off the northeast coast of Newfoundland, far away from far away. Growing up, we had no running water, no electricity, and like many of their generation, our parents couldn't read or write. We fished on the North Atlantic in small wooden boats that we built ourselves. It was a whole life lived in the ebb and flow of each of our seven seasons. In modern parlance, you'd say we were a non-capital accumulating society. It was a wonderful childhood lived in a vibrant, supportive community. In the late 1960s, when I was nine years old, the worst of 20th century industrialization came crashing down upon us. Enormous industrial ships from around the world began fishing in sight of our shores, despite an ostensible 12-mile fishing limit. It didn't take very long before all the fish were gone, and with them, our centuries-old livelihood. One day, our father came home with only one fish. Our community was in great peril. I left in 1975 to attend Carleton University in Ottawa 
and at the same time, my parents decided they had no choice but to let go of their hold on home. My father, mother, and youngest brother, Tony, moved to Toronto. My father always reminded us that it wasn't the fish that let us down. I studied business to try and understand what ideology, what system, had led people to catch almost every last fish. Trying to understand that question has shaped my life. My career in technology was firmly rooted in the 21st century. I was exceptionally fortunate to find myself in the fiber optics industry at exactly the right time. My career took me all over the world, but Fogo Island stayed with me. As I visited, and I visited as often as I could over the years, it was very easy to see that home was becoming less and less. Like many remote communities, Fogo Island, this many storied, culturally rich, and much loved place was fading. Young people were moving away to find employment, and it was deeply painful to watch our traditional knowledge disappearing with every funeral. Through the efforts of the locally owned fishing cooperative, we were fortunate to develop a new kind of fishery after the loss of the cod by adapting to other species like crab and shrimp. The fishery is essential to Fogo Island because going out to fish on the North Atlantic is how we know who we are. But on its own, it is not sufficient to creating a vibrant and diverse economy. After retiring from a career at JDS Unifase in the early 2000s, my brothers Tony, Alan, and I started the Shorefast Foundation as a means to help Fogo Islanders hold on to their place, to hold on to home. We needed to find a way, a 21st century way, for Fogo Island to be itself, but also to be relevant and to belong to an increasingly globalized world. Every person and every community has specific failings. And every person and every community has specific gifts. We approached our, found, our foundation work by focusing on our Fogo Island gifts, by asking and answering the questions of asset-based community development. What do we know? What do we have? What do we love? What do we miss? And what can we do about it? Our goal was to use those gifts to help develop the economy on Fogo Island while at the same time holding on to the culture and the ways of knowing that make Fogo Island unique and irreplaceable. We were very much inspired by what is known as the Fogo process, a participatory film process led by the National Film Board and Memorial University that saw Montreal-based filmmaker Colin Lowe create 27 powerful films in the late 1960s. His art, these films, catalyzed Fogo Islanders to find a path forward and avoid the dreaded resettlement program that had been put in place after the collapse of the inshore fishery. Colin Lowe's work taught us the power of art, the power of art to see, the power of art to see the world underneath the world, and the power of art to make change. So we started our Shorefast work with art by creating an organization called Fogo Island Arts, which has become an internationally recognized artist in residence program. As Dean Potter said, we provided the financial capital for a micro lending fund, as well as the capital to launch three new businesses on Fogo Island. We created an inn because Fogo Islanders are culturally predisposed to profound hospitality. We backed ourselves into a furniture business because we filled the inn with meaningful and lovable objects that were made by Fogo Islanders. And we started a fish marketing business to create proper markets for the now returning cod. These are all social businesses, which mean that when they start to generate surpluses, those surpluses will be returned to Shorefast, the charity, and thus reinvested in the community. There is no private gain. Since I first read his work when I was in university, I have been guided by E.F. Schumacher's words. Nature and culture are the two great garments of human life. 
and business and technology are the two great tools that can and should serve them. My JDS boss, Joseph Strauss, who is here today, used to say, the most important thing is to keep the most important thing the most important thing. <laughs> Nature and culture are the most important things. They are critical to innovation, critical to our economic well-being, critical to our human ability to make meaning, and critical to living with a sense of wonder and joy. We are deep believers in community. We believe it is the job of business and technology to serve community. We also believe in the power of architecture and design. In our projects, we have used architecture to orient ourselves and to help knit the past into the present and to provide a springboard for the future. Thoughtful architecture can do that. By using business architecture and technology as servants of place, we are finding new ways to be relevant, new ways to belong to the world. We have learned that belonging is not a static destination. It is a journey, and it is a journey without maps. Every community, every company, and every person is on this same journey, the journey of figuring out how to belong. It's definitely not easy, especially now that we live in a so-called VUCA world that is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. As graduates, you are on this same journey. When I left Fogo Island to come to Ottawa, I was terrified at having to figure out how to belong all over again. I felt I was in danger of falling out of my own story. I felt anxiety about my own adequacy. But even though I had been separated from home, from my original place, I still took strength and orientation from it. Those roots gave me courage and perspective. This process of trying to hold on to ourselves, to where we were raised, where we were formed, while weaving ourselves into the fabric of a new home, a new story, and a new community requires everyday work. It requires constant and active balancing, navigating the space between where we've been and where we are going with a keen eye on where we are. We are told to follow our passions, but it's not always obvious how to find our passions. It surely doesn't come from a perch on a comfortable chair, or comfortable anything, for that matter. Passion comes from action, not the other way around. Finding our passions, finding our purpose, boils down to finding those one or two things that are bigger than ourselves. That's where community comes in. Participating meaningfully in community is a direct path to finding our passions and finding ourselves. It begins with getting out and joining in with all of our hearts. As I see it, nothing of meaning or consequence has ever been accomplished by a half-hearted effort. As we think about what we do, how we work, and how we use our lives, let's hold on to the words of Jane Addams, who in 1931 became the second woman to win the Nobel Prize. She said, the good we secure for ourselves is precarious and uncertain unless it is secured for all of us and incorporated into our common life. Everyone here has a special story, special failings, and special gifts. And everyone here can make a meaningful contribution to securing good for all of us and incorporating it into our common life. I wish you the very best from here. I commend you for focusing on your gifts and for the tenaciousness and action that has gotten you here today. I wish for you a life that is shaped by your gifts and informed by your failings. Use all of your ways of knowing to pay attention. Spend time outside, bend down to the natural world, lead with your whole heart. Pay close attention to what is going on in the world. 
belong to a real living community and give of yourself to building community and creating belonging. Push for a world where the real and the ideal can exist in harmony. Remember that positive beats negative every time. Adjust your course as often as you need to, but always be sure to walk upright. I will end with a poem from New Zealand poet Glenn Colquhoun that tells us exactly how to do that. The art of walking upright is the art of using both feet. One is for holding on and one is for reaching out. Congratulations to all of you. Bon chance à tous. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Dr. Cobb, for those very uh, thoughtful and very inspiring words. Nous allons procéder maintenant à l'attribution des grades académiques. I invite Provost and Vice uh, Principal Academic Christopher Manfredi to commence the formal proceedings. Provost Manfredi. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. I am pleased to invite students graduating from the School of Continuing Studies for conferral of diplomas or certificates. This is a truly joyous event in the cycle of a university's life, particularly at McGill, where we have such talented and accomplished students. Each student crossing the stage this evening will be greeted by the chancellor, the principal, or the chair of the Board of Governors. Students receiving their first degree shall remove their mortar board or hat at center stage, they will be symbolically capped, signaling ceremonially the conferral of the degree. Students who have already earned a university degree keep their mortar board on and will be congratulated by a tap on the shoulder. The parchment or degree itself is given to students by the dean or delegate after they leave the stage and have a photo taken. You may have seen some students wearing red or white scarves. All self-identifying Indigenous students, First Nations, Inuit, and Métis are entitled to wear graduation scars at convocation in the community and at any and all future McGill events that they attend. The red scarf is for those receiving a degree and white for those uh, getting a diploma or certificate. The feather has two meanings, respect for the person and, a, and the mark of an amazing or special event. The Confederacy belt signifies the attachment to and respect for the land on which we live. And the turtle symbolizes the inclusiveness of all nations and respect for diversity. En vertu des pouvoirs qui me sont conférés par le Sénat de McGill, je déclare que les candidats dans le nom figure sur la liste officielle des diplômés de l'université, qu'ils soient présents ou absents, ont satisfait aux exigences de leur grade diplôme ou certificat respectif. By virtues of the powers conferred upon me by McGill's Senate, I declare that the candidates whose names appear on the university's official list of graduates, whether they be present or absent, have satisfied the requirements for their respective degrees, diplomas, or certificates. By tradition at McGill, we begin with students receiving graduate diplomas and certificates followed by students obtaining undergraduate certificates. I now invite Professor James Archibald to introduce the graduates and Dr. Judith Potter, Dean of the School of Continuing Studies, to congratulate all students. Congratulations, class of 2016. Félicitations. Mr. Chancellor, for the Graduate Certificate in Entrepreneurship, Jin Fu. <laughs> Mohammed Sameh Zahran. <laughs> Fatima Zahran. 
for the Graduate Certificate in Financial Planning, Rose Lynn Bennett. Lec Paul Camille Jean Baptiste. Habibul Hok, also receiving a diploma in supply chain and operations management. For the graduate certificate in human resources management, Yulia Gendievna Karinjina. Yasmin Mirani. Shireen Rahmatullah. Yulia Rusu. Andrea Ellen Spruill. For the Graduate Certificate in International Business, Christine Nasri Abdul Messia. For the Graduate Certificate in Internet Business, Monica Judith Cherniak. For the Graduate Certificate in Leadership, Rosalia Felice. Gada Khalife. Moyana Karlem Orozco Lara. Tetiana Krok Malna. Huh. For the graduate certificate in professional accounting, Natalia Kosenko. Cheng Li. Amanda Hoi Wang Pang. Katrina Pogoncheva. For the graduate certificate in public relations management, Maria Elena. Guarino. For the Diploma in Accounting, Abdullah Almeida. Linda Louise Barrett. Shumana Buya. Michael William Youngworth. Sarkis Kulian. Ryuhyi Liang. Jimine Miao. Larissa Pichakchi, Dean's Honor List. Ben Pincus. Hui Yin Sun. Ti Tru Ha Tran. 
Dean's Honor List. Jun Chao, Dean's Honor List. For the Diploma in Applied Marketing, Ana Adriana Bracho Vegas. For the Diploma in Entrepreneurship, Mingyan Yang. For the Diploma in Health and Social Services Management, Sherry Fraser. Alexandra Hansen. <laughs> Olivia Rosaline Kupaki. <laughs> Juvenia Pabaran. Ezat Safwat Fahmi Saad, Dean's Honor List. For the Diploma in Human Resources Management, Zahir Aga. Claudia Giancarla Aguilar Pena. Mahd Maha Kadri Farid Halawa. <laughs> Zahra Al Maulawi. <laughs> Nizar Al Zazuri. Swad Muhid. <laughs> Roberta Brito da Trinidad. <laughs> Nadine, Nadine Natalia Campbell Hall. <laughs> Julia Kadi Diouf. Jessica Dorval. <laughs> Wahida Ismail, Dean's Honor List. <laughs> Rita Forlini. <laughs> Stephanie Gazet Simeon. Emily Ann Gibbs. <laughs> Erika Maria Geraldo Ortiz. <laughs> Samantha Lenuta Grana. <laughs> Sheikh Mohammed. Ahasunul Hok. Shagufta Islam. Pamela Kadas. Stephanie Lionheart. Tanya Jimena Medina Sarabria. Svilena Mahalova.
Shibli Nahar. Corina Wachis. Christina Pavlos, Dean's Honor List. Frida Ponce Diaz. Angelica Rodriguez Velasquez. Ariel Marissa Siegel. Anastasia Slutsker. Constantina Titsuras. Jasmine Voki. For the Diploma in Management in Entrepreneurship, Florence Ifiwina Aduwari. For the Diploma in Management in General Management, Jennifer Jasmine Ang. Anna Angel. Laura Campoverde. Matthew Alexander Clements. Corinne Fetter, Jacob Jonker Memorial Prize. Ross Edward Patton Hamilton. Mary Catherine Ocelic. Simeon? Mike Simeon. Sam Tituna. Lina Maria Trevino. For the Diploma in Management in International Business, Silvia Eugenia Arroyave Solano. Apostolos Bacalis. David Cavallo, Resolute Forest Products Prize, Dean's Honor List. <laughs> Haye Huang. <laughs> Raisa Claude Leblon. Francisco Eduardo Molina Salcedo. Edgar Jonathan Pritchard. Salma Wafai. For the diploma in business, sorry, for the diploma in management in internet business, Mira Bandar. <laughs> Gustavo Hernandez. <laughs> Madeleine Martinez Cortes.
for the Diploma in Management in Leadership, Joanna Mariana Suchiu. For the Diploma in Management in Marketing, Amanda Gershon Robinson. Rosemary Gonzalez Badiali. For the Diploma in Public Relations and Communications Management, Nikki Kaye. Ishraf Lajmi Sharfi. Miriam Jebar. Domenica Gear. Claude Alicia Guerin Roy. Yosir Cooley. Rami Murad. Gabrielle Anne Mass. Hilary Jane Morden. Sean Gerard Murphy. Margarita Sihodios, Dean's Honor List. Sarah Ann Celeste Spence. Alicia Kaur Tathgur. For the Diploma in Supply Chain and Operations Management, Juan Pablo Becerra. <laughs> Mohammed Ahmad Dabous. <laughs> Omar El Ashakar. Habibil Hok, also receiving a graduate certificate in human resources management. Paulo Hoyapaya. Amnuai Konya. Alexey Klipov. <laughs> Kati Tishtita Ngeni. <laughs> Oksana Ogorodin. Alejandro Jose Rangel. For the Certificate in Accounting, Linda Oguel Ogdre Og Ogello. Karen Gibo.
for the Certificate in Applied Finance, Karim Ali. Janina Da Silva Reis. <laughs> Madam Vice Chancellor, for the Certificate in Entrepreneurship, Rami Sakir. <laughs> Karim Zaidi. For the Certificate in Finance, Nadia Polina Perez. For the Certificate in Health and Social Services Management, Nadia Abdul Fadil. Joyce Nanchin Ila. Wulango Yvonne Ogbona. Shadi Shebani. For the Certificate in Human Resources Management, Mohammed Ali. Alba Emanuela. Anastasi. <laughs> Seth Ato Poma. <laughs> Jennifer Balabanian. Hugo Bergeron Geoffroy. Nancy Bro. Joanna Buffone. Amelia Angie Chantin. Simon Clayman, Honda St. Rose Award. <laughs> Annunciata De Santis. <laughs> Renata Da Suso Da Susa Carvalho Melhem. Honda St. Rose Award and Dean's Honor List. Christina Fazina. Usman Gindo Jr. Mary Agbo Haruna. Karine Kakuti. Rachel Kiwan. <laughs> Diana Lee. <laughs> Nathan Dean Paul Litt. <laughs> Stephanie Lynch. Cynthia Malenfant. <laughs> Maria Eugenia Mejias.
Leslie Morris. Nicholas Ortuno. Joanne Paquette. Reshma Patel. John Emmanuel San Diego. Share. Stephanie Alexandra Scheer. Chelsea B. Smith. Laura Torres Peralta, Dean's Honor List. Claudine Trudeau. Sonia Uzaman. Alexandra Vegg. Rana El Saheb. For the Certificate in Management, Michel Martel. Melanie Smith. For the Certificate in Public Relations and Communications Management, Julia R. Finkelstein. <laughs> Emily Gray, Dean's Honor List. Sarah Elizabeth Lafont. Brittany Tallarico. For the Certificate in Software Development, Masahiro Kawata. Nicola Mazzoni. Electra Rosakis, Dean's Honor List. Soves. Kevin Soves. Tai Leng Tony Tier, Dean's Honor List. Alvaro Tolosa. Yue Cheng. For the Certificate in Supply Chain Management and Logistics, Asiel Ajagodo. Javed Alipur. Julia Bandarenka. <laughs> David Bayard. <laughs> Guylaine Belcourt. <laughs> Arash Fatehi. Terry Lee Michelle Henderson.
Catale Maurice Cabaselli. Elliot Lax. Leon? Leon? Marisol Leon, also receiving a certificate of proficiency in English for professional communication. <laughs> Kristen McBay Wayne. Lynn Jang. For the certificate in systems analysis and design, Kofi Paul Adahi. For the certificate in translation in English to French, Prudence Audrey Asogba. Bruno Lafaye. Mirlène Metellus. Alexandra Geneviève Mir. For the certificate in translation in French English to Spanish, Pedro Hernan Carbajal Alvarado. <laughs> Dean's Honor List, <laughs> Maso <or> Menos. <laughs> Laura Mayo Talens Garcia. Rocio Tamés. <laughs> Isabel Terrio, Dean's Honor List. <laughs> For the certificate in translation in French to English, Astrick Emin. Veronica Daniela Lavinia. <laughs> Julie Nicole Ulrich, McGill Associates Prize in Translation. <laughs> For the certificate in translation in Spanish to English, Rene Secopieri Aguilar. Jules Eric Lapron, Dean's Honor List. For the Certificate of Proficiency in English for Professional Communication, Tamar Mahmoud Al Sayed Abdallah. Hesham Saber Abdul Malik. Dean's Honor List. <laughs> Bilal Abu Zaytoun. <laughs> Carlos Augusto Acosta. <laughs> Mariam Abdimer. Dania Akbatov. <laughs> Mariam Ansari Sadrabadi. <laughs> Abdel Karim Atnas.
Asal Bakhtiari. Farnaze Barak. Anouche Burton. Daniel Charette. Naima Cherchem. Juan David Delgado Maradiaga. Ewa Gora Krasinska, Dean's Honor List. Fatame Jalali, Dean's Honor List. Somaye Javadzad Golnari. Emad Karara. Yuliana Kolimichikova. Yalda Mahmoudian. Carole Marie-Thérèse Meyer. Neda Mizazade Mouagadam. Hoda Mosenian. Jean Charles Fi Monet. Karen Morato Herrera. Mr. Chair. Vivian Natalia Munar Duarte. <clears throat> Nagme Nezat. <clears throat> Chung Hu Vien. <clears throat> Diana Maria Pena. Alexandra Sofia Reyes Prieto. Misotis Rocio Roman Palacios, Dean's Honor List. Mehri Shahriari. Hanan Mohammed Soliman, Dean's Honor List. <clears throat> Juliana Maria Suarez Gonzalez. <clears throat> Nancy Sarwat Zatuos. <clears throat> Abdelatif Tuati.
for the Certificate of Proficiency in English Language and Culture, Fatima Ali Abdul Rahman. Manal Najmuddin Alandijani. Ali Mohammed Al Rashid. Ayetan Achuro. Nahid Babazadeh Kamenehe, Dean's Honor List. Arezu Bourbour. Jabo Serge Wisa. Shirley Joanna Castillo Salas. Marie Silveni Sherry. Maisa Dakli. Amin Al Masudi. Jan Enrich. <laughs> Christian Gomez Fontura Martins. <laughs> Edith Gonzalez Martinez. Olivier Granou, Dean's Honor List. <laughs> Nasmata Habibu, Dean's Honor List. <laughs> Halima Abubakar Hayoub. Michael Ilatropa Robles. <laughs> Marie Alexandrine Iradunkunda. <laughs> Ange. <laughs> Kaititesi Kalitani. Q. Ri Kim, Dean's Honor List. Viviana Esther Lozano, Dean's Honor List. Asanato Keita. Miyuki Nakamura. Yalda Natik. <laughs> Emily Wallet. <laughs> David Enrique Paez Hurtado. <laughs> Alejandra Prieto Castro. Victoria Alejandra Quintero Pinzon, Dean's Honor List. <clears throat> 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 
Frank Robert Ramirez Marchand. Anderson Cayo Santos Silva, Dean's Honor List. Nejla Tijani. For the certificate, in profici uh, certificate of Proficiency French for Professional Communication, Bechar al Malay. For the Certificate of Proficiency in French Language and Culture, Claudia Solange Guaniche. Ori Herbert. Rita Kapisheva. Jesse Hao Ying Ma. Jorge Rojas Jimenez. For the Certificate of Proficiency in Spanish, Jean Marie Vianney. Nitgo Riwa. For the Certificate of Proficiency in Written English Workplace Communication, Carole Amelin. For the Certificate of Proficiency in Written French Workplace Communication, Hedje Zad. Monica Morelli. Tatiana Tolico. Thank you, Professor Archibald and Dean Potter. Would the graduating class please rise? In my capacity as Chancellor of McGill University, I declare and confirm that each of you is now entitled to the distinction of the degree, diploma, or certificate that has been conferred upon you with all the honors, rights, privileges, and responsibilities that are pertinent there too. Congratulations. Felicitations. For the audience, please rise as well as I ask the Secretary General, Mr. Stephen Stropel, to deliver the benediction. Go now in peace and share the gifts that have been entrusted to you. May this university and all graduates be diligent in the free and honest pursuit of truth for the benefit of all. Du que nous venions et que nous allions, humble et plein d'espoir, nous nous laisserons guider par l'amitié et la solidarité, et nous grandirons on suggests. May you be blessed all your days. And to close this evening's ceremony, Professor Winston Purdy will lead us in the singing of our national anthem.
Mm-hmm. 